Hello everyone, a big day for India, for Indian Space Research Organization. Why? Because PSLV C40 carrying 31 payloads was successfully launched today from Satish Dhawan Space Center. So, this is a very important milestone as far as Indian Space Research, Research Organization is concerned. And more importantly, we UPSC aspirants should be even more happy. Why? Because this is a very potential question as far as your prelims is concerned, prelims 2018 is concerned. So, as we move, uh, move across the slide, we will discuss what makes PSLV C40 a very significant mission, what exactly PSLV mission is, that is PSLV satellite launch vehicle is, and more than that, what exactly was the payload that just carried. So moving on, so what exactly makes this PSLV C40 a very significant mission? PSLV C40 or this particular uh, mission is a 40 second flight of PSLV, that is Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle. Now here, it is significant for particularly two major reasons, firstly, it is yet again demonstrating the multiple burn technology which PSLV has is trying to master. Earlier it has also demonstrated successfully but again it should be demonstrated more than once in order to master this particular tricky technology. Now what exactly is this multiple burn technology all about? Multiple burn technology is a very tricky technology which allows the fourth and the final stage of this polar satellite launch vehicle to be reignited more than once in order to place or in order to eject payloads in more than one orbit. So what exactly may, makes it very attractive for the space research organizations across the world in order to trying to, uh, trying to master this particular technology? The main reason is that it will be allowing these spa uh, space research organizations to bring down their satellite launch cost and which makes it very competitive and very attractive too. And that's the reason why here, this, is, uh, this has been successfully launched and successfully verified also. But again, more and more demonstration needs to be done in order to master this particular techni technology by ISRO. And more importantly, C40 consists of the 100 satellites that has been manufactured or built by ISRO Space Center that is situated in Bengaluru. So this is the 100 satellite that has been exclusively or made by ISRO and this is very significant as far as Indian space research is concerned. Now the 100 satellite that has been, uh, sat that has been ejected is a Cartosat 2 series satellite which is a remote sensing satellite which we will be discussing later. Now coming to the various launch vehicles that, has, that is currently being deployed, we, we, can know that we know that PSLV is a workhorse of Indian space research organization. This is a third generation launch vehicle and it is a medium lo category launch vehicle. The other active one which ISRO currently has is the GSLV or Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle. Now what exactly drives Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle or PSLV? PSLV is a four stage satellite launch vehicle, a four stage in the sense that there are four stages of combustion that is happening in this la uh, launch vehicle. Now the first stage, it alternatively uses a solid stage as well as a liquid stage. Now what exactly is a solid stage and what exactly is a liquid stage? Solid stage uses solid propellants, while liquid stage uses liquid propellants. Now what exactly is the advantages of solid, solid propellants as well as what exactly is the advantage of liquid propellants? Solid propellants, the biggest advantage is that it produces a massive amount of thrust that is required for the uh, rocket's lift off. So solid propellants is very important because it provides this initial thrust which helps in attaining velocity in order to escape from Earth's gravity. But the importance or the attractiveness of liquid propellants is that the combustion of liquid propellants can be, com can be limited or can be controlled in a much better manner. So you can switch it off and switch it on when and where, where required. But in the case of so uh, solid propellants, you cannot do that. A solid propellant has to be burned at one single stage itself. So that makes it more attractive, that, that is the liquid propellants is more attractive in sense of controlling the flight of polar satellite launch vehicle or any other launch vehicle. Now moving on, the first stage of polar satellite launch vehicle is, is using S-139 solid rocket motor. Now this S-139 solid rocket motor has a solid propellant that is, that is called as hydroxyl terminated polybutadiene. Now this HTPB is a very important uh, component of PSLV. Now along with that it also has six strap-on motors which is, which is also filled by solid propellants. 
Now moving on, the next stage or the second stage deploys, as I said earlier, a liquid propellant which uses a Vigas engine. And the liquid propellant that is being used is unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine, also known as UDMH. And along with that, it is combined with nitrogen tetraoxides. Now the third stage is a, uh, is a solid propellant stage which uses the same old one that is HTB, that is hydroxyl terminated polybutadiene. Now the last and the final stage of polar satellite launch vehicle deploys two liquid engine which uses monomethyl hydrazine along with mixed oxides of nitrogen. So using this liquid propellant makes it more easier and this is one of the reason why we are actually trying to demonstrate the multiple burn technology. Along with that you also need to understand that there are three basic variants of PSLV. PSLV-G is a variant wherein it has six strap-on motors, each strap-on motors carrying nine tons of solid fuels, which solid propellants, which we had discussed, discussed earlier. PSLV-CA is a core alone version which does not have any strap-on motors, which means that it will be having a much reduced capacity to carry payloads. PSLV-XL is an extended version wherein it would be having six strap-on motors, and each strap-on motors would be carrying 12 tons of solid propellants. So these are the basic three versions. PSLV XL has been used for very times uh, for carrying enlarged capacity, which includes Chandrayaan 1 as well as Mangalayan, which are the uh, Mangalayan 1, which is the first interplanetary mission of ISRO. Now, PSLV has a major capacity to carry out uh, carry on payloads that is up to 1.75 tons to sun synchronous polar orbit, and it also even has a capacity to carry uh, carry payloads, a uh, much reduced payloads in fact, to geostationary transfer orbit. And that is a, there is a limit for that, that is it can carry only 1.425 tons or 1425 kilogram. The recently launched IRNSS versions were, were launched using this PSLV, which means that it was, it was having a payload capacity or its capacity was much reduced or much less than 1425 tons or 1425 kilogram. Now the previous one was PSLV C39, which was unsuccessful because the heat shield was, uh, did not separate in the last and the final version or in the last and the final stage. Now along with that from your prelims point you need to focus on certain important things. The first satellite that has been launched or that has been manufactured by ISRO is the Aryabhata that was, uh, that was launched by USSR in 1975. The first communication satellite that was launched by that was been, that has been manufactured by ISRO is Apple, which has been launched in 1981 from French Guyana. Along with that, you also need to understand that the first P, uh, satellite that has been carried on by PSLV is IRS P, P2, that is Indian Remote Sensing Satellite P2. So these are the most important three, uh, three, uh, three points that you need to keep in mind as far as your prelims is concerned. So moving on to the payloads that PSLV C40 has carried today. First is from, from India. It basically carries three important payloads. Primary objective or the primary important payload of, Cardo of PSLV C40 is Cardosat 2 series, which weighs 710 kilogram. The next is Microsat, and the third one is INS 1C, that is Indian Nanosat 1C, 1C, which is basically to test a particular type of camera. The other one, that is, there are 28 other payloads also, which includes three micro satellites and uh, 25 nano satellites from USA, France, UK, Canada, Republic of Korea, and Finland. Now here, as I said earlier, it would be using a two-orbit feed for the second time here, for the second time in the history, that is, it would be taking the objective or the, taking the primary uh, payloads to, a five, to an altitude of 509 kilometer, then there it, it would be deploying all these, and the rest one satellite would be deployed in the uh, in an altitude that is at 359 kilometer. So it would be reducing its altitude using this multiple burn technology that is reigniting the fourth uh, stage. Using this, it would be deploying it, and it has successfully deployed also. So these are the payloads which has which is going to be carried, which has been carried out. This is the Cartosat 2 series for own. This is the INS 1C that is Indian Nanosat 1C, and this is a Microsat. So discussing about Cartosat 2 series. Cardosat series or the, this particular satellite which has been launched today is the seventh follow-on mission of Cardosat series and also the third follow-on mission of Cardosat 2 series. This, uh, this satellite contains a, a panchromatic as well as a multispectral camera which helps in acquiring 
high resolution data that can be used for various cartographic purposes. Now the major important purpose for this cartographic, uh, for Cartosat is that it can be used for cartographic purposes as I, as I said earlier and also for urban as well as rural application, coastal and coastal land use application, utility management such as of analysis of road network usage etc. For mapping water distribution, for creating land use mapping, land uh, information system as well as for geographical information system. This is a remote sensing satellite and hence all these are deployed and you can also call Cartosat 2 series as a dual purpose that is it can also be used for military purpose that is for, uh, for inquiring into the military aspects that surround in and around the Indian subcontinent that is in and around Indian neighborhood. So these are the major important points that you need to keep in mind as far as your prelims 2080 is concerned. That's it. Thank you.